Hello, Gordon Bryan here from thegreatgordino.com uh, and in this video I'm making a point that's vast, maybe as vast as the universe itself and it's this one. You can't control the whole universe, you really can't. Stop trying! Now, I took that picture in September 2015 of the super red blood moon in the middle of the night, unsurprisingly, and it's not the best picture of the moon ever, is it? By a long shot. And in fact, I took it on the same camera that I'm making to use this video, so it's sort of all in one equipment and it's, it's not the best picture, but it's not bad. It was super red and to be honest it was fantastic to be out there in the middle of the night to capture a rare event like that. It was a you know the sky worked in the, uh, the favour as I was taking the picture and when you are there in the silence of the middle of the night looking at an event like that it helps you put things into perspective. Perspective about the size, the scale of the universe, our place in it and ideas uh, about the thought of trying to control it all. Scale, immense. Our place in it, minuscule. Attempts to try and control it all, futile. Now that pretty much sums it up, doesn't it? But I'm gonna take a bit of a closer look and I think it's worthwhile because it's a key point that can increase our contentment in life and it's a key point on the personal development journey. So, let's get stuck in. The super red blood moon was called that for various reasons. Sounds nice apart from anything else for the media, but one of the reasons that that event happened was because the moon was a lot closer to the earth than it is on other occasions. And of course the earth is massively many times bigger than the moon. But in the solar system, the earth is tiny. And the sun that is at the centre of the solar system, when considered in the scale of the galaxy, is tiny. That galaxy, considered in the scale of the universe, is tiny. Now the subject of the size of the universe, or how many universes there are, well, that's for another video. But <laughs> you get the idea about the size and the scale of our place in the universe. So it would seem pointless, ludicrous, ridiculous to think that we could control it all. Well, of course it would, but we do think we can control it all though. We do think we can control the whole universe. So if it's so silly, why do we do it? Well, the reason we do it is because when we think about controlling the universe, of course we're not trying to control the universe on the scales that I've just spoken about. We're trying to control our universe. The universe that has us at the centre of it. We're trying to control the people around us. Everything that happens to us. Everything that the other people do. Everything that is in front of us. Everything that happens to us along the path. That's what we're trying to control. There's a problem though, and the problem is it can't be done. We think we can do it. We might think that we're sitting at some console, fully in control, pressing buttons and pulling levers and twiddling knobs to try and be in control of everything and all around us. But it's, a, it's an illusion. Uh, it, it might be an illusion that lasts a while. It might only be a fleeting illusion, but at some point, the actions of other people or the actions of random circumstance around us will have that control falling around around our ears. Now, you might look at other people and think, well, they're definitely in control. They're bullying or violent or isolating other people or intimidating or various controlling ways. They're in control of their universe because they control the other people in their universe. Well, yeah, for now, that might be the case. 
But even if it is the case, the control is so stifling that it leaves no room for the actual authentic them, their joys, their passions and what makes them feel alive because that's all stifled by their need to control and whatever it takes for them to exercise the illusion of that control. And the thing is, it just doesn't have to be that way. A better way is to just accept that we can't control the universe and let it go. Let things go. Let the actions of other people go. It's take on that much more relaxed view. Now, when we do that, it does mean that other people will take actions that we don't like, that we wouldn't have chosen, that bring consequences we're not happy with and that we would choose and want other things. But that is a price, if you look at it, well worth paying to allow the freedom to breathe, the freedom to express ourselves, the freedom for other people to express ourselves. And it also allows room for random life circumstance, although it might throw bad things our way, to throw wonderful things our way, joyous moments that can come our way, opportunities that present themselves to us because we've allowed them to because we've given space for that to happen by releasing the need to control the entire universe. So am I saying though that we should stop trying to control everything? That we should just let things happen in a random way and allow ourselves to be buffeted by circumstance our whole lives? No, I'm not saying that. That would be silly. That's the other extreme. One extreme is trying to control everything, the other extreme is trying to control nothing. There are certain areas in life where we should be exercising control. Our health, our careers, our wealth, control in some ways in our relationships, in our lifestyle. But the control that we should be exercising is control about our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions and our results. So can you see the difference? The difference between controlling other people, which is trying to control the whole universe, or trying to control our universe, our thoughts, our actions. That's the vital difference because our thoughts and our consequent actions and the consequent results are things that we can control to an extent. Our actions have consequences and those consequences will involve other people at some point. And it's that is where the randomness of life comes in, the randomness of the universe. Sometimes things will go wrong. Sometimes life will let us down. Sometimes other people will let us down. And that happens if we aren't in control all the time. So, be it. We cannot control the whole universe. We cannot control other people all the time. And that's just the way it goes. But if we accept that, and we combine that with an acceptance that we can control our thoughts, or we can react to how we, we can control how we react to our thoughts, and we can control the actions we take. We can always control the actions we take. That's the difference between controlling the whole universe and controlling our universe. So, look to your universe, the one that does have you at the center of it, of it, and then look at the whole universe with us in it as an Earth, a tiny planet orbiting the sun, a tiny star in a big galaxy, a tiny galaxy in the massive universe, one of potentially many universes, or possibly not. Are you trying to control that whole entire universe, or are you trying to control your universe with the center at it, center of you, with you at the center of it? It's easy for me to say. Make sure you're not trying to control the wrong one. <laughs> okay, so I hope you enjoy that point. If you did enjoy the point, let me know. 
leave a comment below wherever you happen to be seeing this video. Um, pop over and see me at the blog, thegreatgordino.com, and pop over and see me at, at Facebook, which is my social media channel of choice, facebook.com slash thegreatgordino uh, is my personal profile, and a page there, facebook.com slash your life transforming. So, it's Gordon Bryan signing off. I've been guilty of trying to control the whole universe uh, in my time. Now I try and focus more on my universe, my thoughts, my actions. Make sure you're not trying to control the whole universe. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon.